Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello to you. Good morning. Welcome back to the garage where behind me there are two pretty clean cars, the McLaren and the Ferrari, but in the middle, the daily driver over winter, the Mercedes AMG GTR is absolutely filthy. So today we're going to jump in the GTR, take it over to Topaz, where we'll catch up with Nabil and talk about bringing it back to life, back to its, I could say former glory. It's only two months old, put 3,000 miles on the clock and it is looking horrendous. Let me just just quickly show you around. I mean, it's running on the winter tires, but the wheels are filthy. So much salt and grime has attacked it around the front. It's got PPF, but really, it is time to bring this back to life. Just, this is, this is, it's deep, deep, deep dirt, and it needs a proper, proper shine. You'll see more when we get it out of the garage and we take a proper look around with Nabil, but I'm going to hand over to him to give you the professional style opinion and approach and explain exactly what's going on when we get to Topaz. For now though, let's jump in the car and get it over there. There's no question there's something quite cool about a very dirty supercar, but I'm not gonna lie, I want this cleaned up, especially ahead of the Autosport show, just making it look good, spick and span as it should be. And as we come around, actually, the interior is not too bad. This has stayed in a good way, but I've made sure not to get in really with any dirty clothes or shoes or the like. But let us step in now, because it is going to be time to start it up. 2,908 miles. So, into life we go. For the moment, I am staying put right here inside the car. The weather is atrocious. It is so grim right now. However, I've got a nice view right in front of me, a bit of double trouble, the two 911 GT3s over there. And in fact, double trouble continues because right here, you have a black Hurricane Performante, and at the other end of that line, a white Performante and a Vanquish in the middle and a lovely dark red. And this, the running in sticker, can now be removed. I don't need that in the car anymore. Also actually over to the left, that trailer is the Topaz trailer that first ever transported this car from uh, Mercedes-Benz Brentford, the dealer where I bought it, to here to have the work carried out before I went and got it very, very grimy. However, at some point, I need to go in and chat with Nabil and talk about what we're actually gonna do with the car. Just gonna take my time with this rainfall. Fortunately, the rain has subsided a little bit and I've just been in to see Nabil, who is coming out right now. How are you doing? Good, how are you? <laughs> that, <laughs> face. that speaks a thousand words. Right, let's come over and have a look. So, Nabil is gonna talk you guys through this a little bit, but first impressions? It's, it's dirty. <laughs> it's dirty, that's for sure. It's absolutely filthy. Honestly, is this the same car? It is, just 3,000 miles later. Wow. Although, with wow, the uh, wow. rain on it right now and the bits that are starting to dry, it looks completely disgusting. Wow. The, I think, you know what? At least you've used it properly. That's the most important bit. Yeah, I think the biggest challenge for you guys is going to be the exhaust and oh, yeah. lower diffuser. Oh, yeah. That's a lot of filth. filthy, yeah. <laughs> total, nice total though. grime. But it's the best feeling, though, when you get all that off. It's the best thing to do. Well, I'm, I'm looking forward to that, that's for sure. So what do you think it needs? What are we in store for? Um, I think the best thing to do is let's let's go through washing the car mm -hmm. after it's had a proper going, you know, yeah. a, a good road trip like this. <laughs> yes. uh, and, then, and then we can go through that. And once we've done that, then we can just see the paint condition on the bits that aren't protected. Okay, uh, yeah, that'll be interesting. Yeah, and then we can look at that to see if it's... So to see the bits good. between, because we did the front end protection PPF and the vulnerable areas. So parts like the bonnet and the wings are done, but not the door on the yeah, sides, exactly. so we'll be able to see a comparison between. Yeah, it'd be quite cool, I think. It'd be a good idea okay. to do that. And then um, we'll see how that goes, and then we'll protect it. We'll protect the rest of the car, I think. Sounds good to me. If we have time. <laughs> <laughs> and then get it all looking perfect. Yeah, yeah. Well, exactly, from yeah. now on, I leave the video in your safe and trustworthy hands. Cool, cool. So, guys, you guys with me again. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> Before taking the car over to the wash bay, I just wanted to just point out something. If you have a look at Tim's car, as you can see, it's got a lot of aero, which means that there's a lot of dirt and salt from the road that goes into all the nooks and crannies of the car. Um, it's important to know where these areas are so that when you are about to wash the car, to make sure there's absolutely clean in that area. The last thing you want to do is leave some residual salt in that area and for it to discolor plastics or corrode any metals. So let's get on with the wash stage. Okay, the car is in the wash bay and step one is to do the wheels. Now some of you may be asking why do we do the wheels first rather than the paintwork and that's a very simple answer to that. If you wet the paint, even if you have a water purification system, watermarks can mar the paint and can cause a problem. Um, now the last thing you want to do is create more work for yourself. So we start off with the wheels uh, and by, by that we make sure that we don't get any residual water anywhere else on the paintwork. So. 
wheels get done first. And while we have the wheels off, we're gonna quickly throw a coat of protection on the inside of the wheel. This will make cleaning much easier and also prevent any of the grime or salt to damage the alloy wheel. Onto the engine bay, the first thing to do in this stage is to mask off any areas that can potentially get damaged in water or moisture. Now we are using a dry seam system, but that still has an element of moisture. So we get those masked up, get onto the steamer, and blast away any of that salt or grime. Now onto everyone's favorite, the snow foaming stage. This step is vitally important because it makes sure that any dirt or grime that's on the paint is lifted safely. And we're trying to minimize obviously getting any paintwork defects. So spray on the snow foam the first time, let it set and then jet it off. Then snow foam it again and that's what you're going to be using to actually wash mitt the car down. Obviously, you need to make sure that your wash mitt is a deep pile wash mitt and that you're using pH neutral shampoo to preserve any protection that has been previously applied on the car. One of the main reasons why we're actually doing this treatment on Tim's car is after a 3000 mile very extensive drive, you need to make sure that you actually get rid of all the salt. Now, the salt is a killer. The last thing you want to do is have any of the salt residual being left on any of your components, whether it be its suspension or brakes. As you can imagine, it corrodes them. So let's get that stuff off and make sure that it's totally clean. And then the final stage is to pat the car dry. No circular motions, please. Only straight lines. This is just to prevent any swirl marks or marring. And if you did get them, they're much easier to remove if they're in straight lines. Now, some of you still use chamois leathers. Now, I can't begin to explain to you how bad chamois leathers are actually for your paintwork. Let's go through a bit more detail about that. The main differences between chamois and microfiber cloths. The important thing to remember is that the difference, the main difference is that a chamois leather or a chamois leather is extremely thin. And if you look at, for example, a general purpose microfiber, it's got a certain thickness to it. And the reason why it's very important to have a certain thickness is because it's, which is called the pile. Uh, and the reason why to have a deep pile is so that any, any sort of dust or anything that you're trying to clean off, off of the surface can actually go into the pile rather than be stuck above the surface and dragged onto the surface. So if you can imagine, if you had a chamois leather, which is say for example, I don't have one because we don't use them, but say for example, this is a chamois leather with literally no pile in it. If I were to put a item of a sort of a, a, a dust particle or something on the table and I put this on top and I'd wipe it, it'd basically be rolling the dust particle on top of the surface. And um, whereas if I'm using a, a microfiber, with a pile and there's a dust speck there, when I come to wipe it, it actually lifts it up and goes into the pile. And that's the key difference between the two. Now with microfibers, you got a huge plethora of different microfibers. I just got here a couple to show you the thickness. So obviously this is a general general sort of microfiber that we use, but it's, it's, it's a decent thickness. And then it gets thicker for different purposes. And then it gets super thick when you're looking at you know, uh, drying towels. And again, this is a really, really deep pile microfiber drying towel. These, these are the ones to use when you're washing your cars. So um, just to show you a quick little diagram of what I thought of. So if you have, if you have at the bottom being the pile, and then uh, my handwriting is really bad, sorry. And then on the side you have damage. Then what happens is, is that the damage is at the highest point when the pile is at the lowest point. So if you look there, that's basically what happens. So if your pile, if you've got a deep pile, which is something like this, then that means you are having the least amount of damage because that means you're sort of preventing any defects actually getting put into the car. So that's why when it comes to drying, please do not use a chamois leather, use a deep pile microfiber cloth. Okay, I've just had word that the car has now been washed and is now ready for inspection. Let's go have a look at the car to see what the difference is between the bit that's got PPF on it and the bit that hasn't got PPF on it. So we can see what kind of defects has incurred. And it's only been washed once, so let's just see what happens. Let's go down and check it out. Okay guys, I just wanted to show you something here whilst we're just noticing and doing some more on the inspection. If you have a look to see, there's actually the 
defect there, which is actually a stone chip. So, because obviously that doesn't have any film on this side, it didn't have film on the on the doors either. But you see, you can get stone chips very, very quickly. Even within 3,000 miles, you can get a stone chip. So it's imperative to actually install film from the get-go. So we've had a look at the car. We've inspected all the areas that haven't had paint protection film on them. Um, and unfortunately there are some stone chips and swell marks and that's after just one wash So it shows you the importance of having paint protection film on the car from the get-go So um, I've spoken to Tim. Tim has agreed to do the rest of the car um, Because he's obviously going to keep this color. Uh, I think it's the right decision. Good decision Tim And then um, uh, after that we're going to obviously once it's done We're going to tidy it up and show it to Tim. So hopefully everything goes according to plan and Tim is going to pick it up tomorrow. So let's do it Hi guys, I'm back. So I've had the word from Nabil that the car is ready over at Topaz. Let's jump in the GT8, head over and check it out. We are about to arrive and although the weather is totally rubbish and horrible, fortunately we do have Turbo Transport here today who is going to load up the car immediately and we'll be able to take it away in a transporter. But we'll just park up out here. Ooh, nice 488 Spider there and uh, go get things sorted out. Here we are then, and in some very good company right here. We'll come back to the Bugatti in a second, but let's just take a look around the GTR, and no doubt Nabil has covered some of this, but it is looking spectacular. So much better than when I dropped it off a few days ago. So, it's fully covered in paint protection film now, which you really can't see. There are no visible edges around here at all. It is looking magnificently tidy, and down here, the state of the exhaust and diffuser before was disgusting, and now it looks completely brand new. Totally, totally shiny and lovely as it should be. That is why you do this, and it's going to stay looking like this now by having the protection film all over the whole car. This is wonderful. Really, really nice. It literally is like collecting a new car again. It's perfect, immaculate. But just for a moment, look at that. The Bugatti Veyron Legend Edition Black Bess with the black and gold. That is very nice. The Grand Sport Vitesse Quad Turbo W16 back there makes my car look a little bit regular almost. But nonetheless, this is awesome. We're going to load it up into the truck outside so that it stays looking exactly like this for the show. The beast is ready to return. Into the truck, it's gonna go then straight out of here. And the reason we're doing this is to keep it looking in this wonderful state up to Auto Sport. So big thanks to Turbo Tony, Tony Tran Turbo Transport, who's loading the car up at the moment. The trailer is just about loaded. Tony's going to take the AMG GTR up to Autosport. We're going to jump into the GT8. We'll be driving up with that car as well. Both are going to be on display. You'll be able to see them if you're able to come down to the show over the weekend. But a big thanks to Topaz, to Nabil for making the video that I need to check out as well to see exactly what they've done with the car. But I'm already looking forward to my next adventure. So stay tuned for that coming up very, very soon after this weekend. Anyway, thanks again, guys. I will catch up with you again very soon. Cheers.